The road to Pyeongchang finishes here in Koenigsee, Bavaria. The final day of the regular World Cup season for bobsleigh and skeleton. We're at the oldest artificial ice track on the planet, building up towards the Olympic Games. Hello, everybody. Welcome to snowy Bavaria as we get ready for the four-man bobsleigh. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me, John Morgan. Uh, this is the track, the original artificially cooled track that they built in 1969. More for luge than Bob. They've had a bobsled uh, involvement in the mid-70s. That Chrysler is what they built. And, you know, like any track, it's about to start here. It's pretty steep. You know, you're going to see the athletes have a little bit more opportunity to get in, get down without the hassles of St. Moritz last week. And this first curve, we saw problems there in that first curve yesterday, a few sleds. Now the four S's, the shell and Groba. Left, right, left, another right. I mean, then the exit out of the fourth S into this long bend away. The standard's supposed to be three hits. We saw some people snaking through here with only hitting once. Saw people hit five times. Turbodrome, another challenge. Tight, quick, 360 degree Kreisel into the labyrinths. Saw some great action in here yesterday. The four mans don't fit as well as the two mans in that spot. Echo Vond, flat curve, exit uphill. A lot of opportunity here to lose some time. Track's an easy track to get down. Maybe I'll say that again. The track's not easy to get down. It's not easy to get down fast. It's a challenge. It is a real challenge. There are trip wires everywhere to trip you up. Johannes Lochner of Germany, the local boy here, is our World Cup points leader. And in the race for the Crystal Globe, he needs just a 21st place finish to beat Francesco Friedrich to the Crystal Globe as our World Cup champion, the best four-man driver of the season. There are 25 sleds in the field. So for Hansi Lochner and for all the crowd here, most of whom are wearing the blue and white of Bavaria in one way or another, this is a great homecoming opportunity. Well, we've got 25 sleds in our field. The fast 20 go through into the final heat of the season, the last dress rehearsal for the Winter Olympic Games. And it is winter. It was spring almost when we arrived at the beginning of the week, but the snow is here again. There's Nico Walter. And there is Kevin, Kevin Kuska, Kuska making his, this week his, his last, last ever, ever World <laughs> Cup race. The career started in 99. Wow. Sam Ritz was due to be, but after they got disqualified from the four-man race, he went, OK, that's not how I'm going to end my career. What he wants to do is end with victory. And here, they've got a great opportunity. Dorian Gregory of Romania will be the first of our sleds off. And teammate Maria Constantin also drives in the four-man race. We have 25 sleds in the field. As we said, the fast 20 go through. So it's going to be interesting to see who ends up in that drop zone in yesterday's two-man race. The top two Russian drivers failed to make the, the, the field. So there's a lot of pressure on them in the four-man race. The final race of the BMW IBSF four-man World Cup season. Koenigsegg, Bavaria, and it's Doran Grigori of Romania who gets the action underway on a lightly snowing Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Martin Haven and John Morgan covering the action with you. So I think this Romanian sled qualifies for the games. It was the only Romanian. They didn't qualify in women's or two men. Very disappointing in women's because Maria Constantino comes up, was 12th at the World Cup points. And, you know, I'd say the Romanians had a rich history in our sport going back in the 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s where they won a lot of World Cup, World Championship medals. And, you know, it's just tough to see them not get a sled in the two men or women's at this Olympics. Well, this is quite an old fashioned looking sled compared to some of them that you'll see coming down very rounded, traditional shape. So not as good aerodynamically as the newer Valners, the FESs and the uh, US BMW sleds. 121.8, that translates at 75 and a half miles an hour. But and no this one. will be one of the slower sleds, John, but easily eclipsing speeds we saw in the two man race. Dan, the guy does everything for him. No one does more with less than the Romanian program. They show up all the time. They should have spots in the Olympic Games just because of their perseverance. They just are here every week. 
And this is the first of many pictures we're gonna have with the sleds going airborne in the chicane, the labyrinths, the doodles, whatever you wanna call them. Then down there, uphill section before the last curve, you saw a little action there, and he had to steer hard in the finish. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> exactly right. Bumped up in the labyrinth. Don Gregori, second World Cup race of the year for him. Marcus Trikel of Austria, a couple of years ago, he was just dipping in and out as well. But this season, a full World Cup campaign in Europe. Best result, 14th in Altenburg. And this is a similar track where the driver can really make a huge difference, as he did in yesterday's Great two result man. yesterday in a two-man. He was seventh in unit, run one. Fell to about a 12th, I think, but still, guy keeps coming on. Yep, big result for him and for this second Austrian crew. 490. Start record, by the way, 473. Unlikely to see that broken today, but who knows in a second who heat knows? if it clears up. The yes S's, get them right. It's beautiful to ride through there. Get them wrong like that, and it just choke holds your time at the bottom. Five hits. That's not what you want. 114.4. Better speed than the Romanians. But it's going to lose some time there. Speed of the bottom from the Romanians, 121.8. His mother and father were here yesterday. They were so proud. We saw them at the end of the first heat. They're giggling. I'm sure they're here as well watching this. Yeah, not far from Innsbruck. 1171, that's 72.7 top speed, 77 and a half miles an hour. And we're only going to see sleds go quicker. Yeah. So he'll go to the games. The Austrians qualify two sleds. This young pilot really came out of nowhere a couple years ago at the SOM at the World Championships in Innsbruck. And I reckon that's got to be good enough to make the race. 49 seconds about should be the cutoff. Here's the exit of the S's. Too early. Look at the articulation. Yeah. So I'm have to steer of, away from that short wall. A lot didn't of you? pressure, and also keep your eyes on the guys riding behind him for aerodynamics. 77 miles an hour, aerodynamics on that long straightaway means a lot. Good job, Marcus. Next up, Clemens Brescher of Switzerland, third of our Swiss drivers, Fabio Badraun, rejoining the squad since Christmas after a couple of years away with injury. So he's on the back of this Swiss lead. We'll also see Rico Peter, who's the number one Swiss driver. And this young man, of course, made his two-man World Cup debut in Winterberg and won the race, then took bronze the next weekend in Innsbruck. He has struggled to find that form since then, though. 17, 21, and 18 in the three events he's competed in here in Europe, including 18 on his home track last week at San Moritz. I was very surprised at that. Well, start, they, they should be able to tire. 493, 94 start, maybe. 95. Yeah, it's too kind of velocity. 56, 7, so they're down to the Austrians across the board. Now, the S is down. Remember, the Austrians slide it also to difficulty getting out of the S. Let's take a look. It's pretty good. Now, for the first time two, yesterday, we saw two-man drivers trying to drive around the bends like the skeleton athletes do. There was quite a conversation yeah. we had about that. It kind, some of them, it kind of like the Germans really seem to have it down, as you might expect. Seven yeah. hundreds behind. Whoa. What speed he bump? got? Needs that 125. Doesn't have it. Yeah, that was a hard bump down there through the doodles. That takes speed out, 116. So it's about a kilometre an hour down, so that gap will open a fraction. Hey, 49, Wolfgang Stauffer had a good day yesterday uh, with the women's sleds. Swiss women put two sleds in the top 11, I think. Most importantly, Fabia, uh, the firecracker, moved up into the top 10 at World Cup ranking. Yep, that'll be good for her start during the Olympics. Sabina Hafter. The men didn't do so well. Well, this is... I'll take these pictures all day. Watch the back end here. Talk about a hard hit, 1,389 pounds. Look at the bottom left runner. Came Whoa. Late, came late off the cries as you saw him, as he was going away from us, desperately trying to steer away from that first right-hand impact, but he'll be at the games. Mm. Oh, here's an interesting group. Yeah, all-female sled. Maria Constantine, Teodora Vlad at two, then Beatrice Puyu and Florentina Iusko. 
So Maria with two of the brakemen who regularly race World Cup, plus their spare, Teodora, who's the girl at two. You know, they're trying to get a women's bobsled tour going. They're just not enough participants, not enough countries. And so the IBSF just made the rule that if you want to compete, compete with the men. And here we are. Elderly FES sled. Not, not quite sure how they managed to get so many sleds out of the German uh, out of German hands. They they a little lend job lease, with it. little lend lease. Yeah. Well, yeah, got it. Go, we've got a big skid going there. Based in Winterberg, we saw pictures in the historic race of Andre Langer winging it in a sled very similar Wolfgang to this. Hopper. Wolfgang Hopper. Well, maybe not Hopper's vintage. Yeah. This is more Andre Langer vintage. I don't like this. I don't like this. Ooh, she gets away with it. She got in too far on the right side of the exit of Chrysler. 118 waters. Decent speed. Not bad at all. That's the top speed. So, uh, it's not, no, wrong wrong clock. It would have been top speed there, but 110.1. So, 181. So, don't take one and done. Paul yeah. Niago. I mean, again, the Maria did not qualify for the Olympic Games. It was 12th in the ranking. And just uh, her, her thing was not having two Romanian sleds in the competition. Yeah. She would have qualified if she had that. And I think next time round, with Andrea Grecu coming on, I think they've got a really good chance, sure. if Maria keeps going, of having a two-sled uh, team in a competition. Well, see us some skidding there. I didn't like the way she was down here. Look at this. Look at the back. Look at the runners. Do you see the runner, front runner steer there? Think about how Boy. light the sled is, though, compared yeah, to compared having 310 kilo men yeah. in it. So she's got a really wayward tail end to that sled, and you won't see that from too many of the others. Next up, Evo De Bruyne. Tom Delahunty there with the team. And Vin Normans, who's the president of the Dutch Federation, and also runs Eurotech that builds the sled. He's here this weekend as well, really trying to encourage Evo and the team into greater things in the next quad. Unfortunately, they don't get a spot for the games, but there's an awful lot of development about to happen in Dutch bobsledding. Good energy. Dennis Pankert too, brought van der Zijder back in a team this year at three with Janko Frenchich on the back, who was in the two-man race yesterday. 490, same start as the Austrians. What kind of velocity can they achieve? Let's see it. Well, De Bruyne with a really good result in a two-man yeah. yesterday. Personal His tail, pass. yeah, tail must be right up. Oh, and that's just what he didn't need. A big skid coming down the bend away. It's going to really hurt his speed. Yeah. He needs to hit the 49 one. second mark. That's not bad speed. 114.5 is the fastest. Yeah, but that was the Austrian who had the same start as him. Yeah. And now oh. he's got to go a little airborne into the C curve at 123.4. Second fastest. Coming back a little bit. Not but bad. Now, this should be enough to put him in the race. Third fastest at the moment, ahead of Dorian Gregori and Romagna. Uh, teammate Maria Constantin. You could tell Tom wasn't happy that exit of S's did him in. Yeah, I think he though has had better four-man runs this week than that one. If he gets into the second heat, hopefully he'll be able to display that after yeah. yesterday's two-man. That S was tricky for all the bobsleds, the skeleton sleds, even the four-mans. Yeah. Look at that. You don't see too often where you get a four-man that sideways. Tom, what did you think of it? One of many trip wires on this track. The and S then watch is. this. Watch the back end yeah. here. You want to see 1,400 pounds go up in the air at 78 miles an hour right there? All right. Well, if he gets a second run, hopefully he'll be able to improve on that. But I think he may be on the bubble. Marcus Trigel of Austria leads. Five of 25 sleds down in the penultimate heat of the season. Lavius Oscars Gibermanis has claimed medals on this Koenigsegg track in two-man, but never yet in four-man. He is, however, a four-man World Cup race winner. Let's see what he can produce. This should be mid-80s, if not better. Sixth place in the two-man race yesterday. 86. Pretty good. Tells you how good the Dutch started, 490. That was excellent. 56.8, that's the best, not even the best velocity. Even though it was the best start. And when he hangs it, look at him try and check the runners. Yeah. Two hits. Steering hard Boy, on he balance. steered right through there, pretty yeah. good. 115-1. Right. Top speed so far. And that is 71 and a half miles an hour. Plunges out of here. 
The downhill down corkscrew. I'm telling you now, this race is going to be so close. Yeah. He should be way ahead of those sleds that just came down, and he's not. 124.5 is the top speed, 77 and a half miles an hour. Still doing 73 miles an hour at the bottom. 48.89. So whatever Marcus Treichel had, 89, Bracker, 89. Treichel was 49.04. I think a 49-second run plus a tiny 49, margin gets you in. 49.27. We're marking down now. All right, you say That's that. That's Ivo De is Mark, and, but the yeah, last thing should be have the been better. Point. They should have been more. How good was Marcus Treichel? Yeah. Well, as yesterday, excellent. Well, at least he got out of the curve straight. Watch the runner tips here, though. This is called checking it. Late slope. It's just sort of feeling I might skid a little bit, so you check the runners, you flip them, and hope to get the skid out of the sled. So we've seen half of them come out early, half come out late. Of course, we haven't seen the German yet, so we'll wait for the middle approach. Next up, Oscar's Melbardis. Now, he and his teammate, Oscar's Cuba Manis, were tied for fifth after the first heat of the two man race. Melbardis broke the tie, finished fifth ahead of Melbardis, uh, ahead of Cuba Manis. Got his name on the back of the helmet, just to remind me which of the Oscars I'm looking at. Well, this Oscar is huge. <laughs> he, is, he is that. He's big man, and he's 80, 85%. Last time he won a medal on this track, bronze in 2014-15 season, Max Arndt was the winner. We saw him hit racing in a historic race today. 486 starts like in the two-man. 56 identical. Eight, same velocity too as their teammates. Well, Melbardis is the more experienced driver. Let's watch the runner tips here, the exit. That's the exit you want. And now look at what they drive one, away from that first hit. Two, three hits. That's the norm. 115 and change, 115, four. So he's got the best speed, but we'd expect that. So 125 at the bottom if he gets a good labyrinth. He does get a good labyrinth. Only 10 hundreds in the lead. I thought he'd be more. 124, two, not as good as his teammate. No, 77.2, not Come five. On. Well, that's better speed, though, than anybody. Uh -oh. Keeper Manish was five. 170. Oh, you're right, right I take that back. You're right. Was so he lost speed below the cries, but yet it looked clean -ish. Well, you're right. I missed that last speed trap. Wow. So he was uh, three quarters of a kilometer down, which is why he lost 10 down to five. Yeah. Well, he's not tied with his teammates. He's 500s in front of him. Whether they'll be fifth and sixth after this first heat, Let's I'm not sure. Look at the sure. hands as everybody hops in the sled here. Check out the hands. Get in, get down with cat-like movements. Oh, there is a reach. Look at the cohesion there. It almost looked like synchronized swimming. Yeah. So good at the start. Look at the four huge men, and how's the aerodynamic profile here? Pretty decent. Pretty good. Yeah. A lot of G-forces help you squish down in the sled. Chris Spring of Canada, Boy, big season take... this year for Spring. Yeah, it didn't take long to go. Winner in two-man, two bronze medals in four-man. Stones, Kirkpatrick, and Neville right on the brakes, 56-8. That's very good, 47. They have good velocity, lesser start. Well, he lies in sixth position in the World Cup standings, but he finished in third place overall in two-man. That's a lot of drift. That's a lot of action right there. So yeah. this, he, he's praying for 115 speed, 114.4. Yeah, he's he's going to be fighting to stay in third. Yeah, he's in a hole here, isn't he? But plus 19, that'll, that'll keep him in third. 123.7, that's not very good. Barely any quicker than Evo de Bruyne of the Netherlands. 116.3 at the bottom isn't great. Fourth, he's behind Marcus Trichel. Wow, well, look at the coaches, look on, Lyndon Tri Rush. Trichel off second, got great ice, but he did get a good drive as well. Clearly there's something about this track that really agrees with Marcus Trichel. Oh, yeah, something about it really agrees with Justin Cripps as well. Chris Bing didn't quite get the result he wanted in that drive, and here's why. Too early coming off. And knew it, didn't he? Immediately yeah. you saw him, he knew he was having to make corrections. And here, well, this isn't as bad as any. We saw a little airborne from almost every sled. Look how close the spectators get here. Yeah. To me. Steve Holcomb high five walk down the crowd. Eight sleds down, here is our ninth starter, and here is one of the guys that the crowd will expect to perform and finish on the podium. The guy, number two, look at number two. Yeah. Kevin Kuska on the left of your shot. 
And then Alex Rodiger and Eric Franke are on the sled. So. This, this is their Olympic team. One of the three, but these three pushers. We had a function last night, spoke to Nico Valter, said, you're not having dinner? He said, no, don't want to be overweight, can't afford a third disqualification in three weeks. Two men in Innsbruck after a medal, four men last week in the first run, 480. Excellent what a great start. Load. What a great load. 57-7, that's a number. In like greased lightning. Now you expect him coming out of these S's clean. Ooh, a little skid, but he straightens it up and drives around One, that first big hit. Two, three hits. The third hit, though, was late. Yeah. 115.8, well, that's as good as anybody. 72 miles an hour, quickest speed into the Chrysler we've seen. Two tenths, he should keep pulling away, too. Is he going to be up to 126, 125 flat, so 77.6 is just a fraction quicker than anyone. And he's coming in strong. 179, it's a really nice 33. run. 49.5, 48.51. Uh, what we expected from now the Austrian, or the uh, Latvian sleds didn't get it. Quarter of a second off the track record set by Johannes Lochner, winning the four-man gold in the World Championships in February last year. Well, when you got the best start, you got a chance for the best finish, and here's the exit of the S's. We just check the runners, though. It wasn't comfortable, but there was a minor check, and yeah. look at the aerodynamic profile of the huge guys behind him, and there's Kuska. What a career. Four gold medals and a silver that guy's won. What a fun bunch of guys they are as well. Back of Andre Lange sleds. Brief moment to say happy birthday to Lee and Carl Johnson's dad, celebrating his 70th birthday in Gran Canaria with the rest of the family. So Carl, former British bobsledder, or Sir, as he's known to Lee. Lee Johnson, the British coach. This is Lamin Dean with Ben Simons. Sam Blanchet and Andy Matthews, the four-man crew today. Look how quickly it drops off there. You can see the apex there. Yeah, you have to load under that timing gantry, essentially under the walkover bridge, otherwise the sled just gets away from you. Explosion. Lamin comes from the back block. Some athletes lock themselves into the ice and push from up front. See what the British can do. 497. Wow. They're the ninth, tenth sled down, eighth best time. Very surprised at that. There's yeah. some good athletes here. Well, they're trying to line themselves up, get the two four-man teams sorted out for the games. They got one two-man spot, two four-man spots. Oh, and a long drift down. The bend away and hitting everything in sight. 113. Wow, the lowest speed of any sled other than the Romanian girls. Now this is going to leave Lamin in a big hole and hoping Ooh. rather than expecting to make the second heat. I said 49.27 is going to be the cut. 122.0, that's 75.8 miles an hour. 115.2, it's not great. And at the line, eighth place, 49.55. I don't think that's going to do it. Well, he's only got two sleds behind him. Needs another three to drop behind to guarantee himself a spot. It's Evo De Bruyne has got yeah. three behind him. Clements Brasher, four behind. But we are only 10 into our 25-strong field. Well, came out too early, and, or late, excuse me, late. Got the articulation. When you see the sled split like that, that's just a lot of energy going in the wrong direction, left to right in the sled. And then down here, look at the... Mix and max yeah. and whatever you want to call it down there. That's Bounced around in there, don't you? So, 10 down. Nico Walter leads for Germany from the Oscars is is is. Marcus Tricol, Chris Spring and Clements Brasher. Well, the Canadians don't take any time. It's snowing. Justin Cripps, the two-man Crystal Globe winner, the World Cup champion with Alex Kopacz, Jesse Lumsden, and on the back, Shea Smith. Good start, 57 flat. Not what the Germans had, but... 200s off and 7 tenths velocity. Now let's see if he can exit the four S's without pain. Pretty good. Two hits here. Barely. 115. Yeah, 115 one. That's not the best, but top five. Last Canadian gold medal here 12 years ago. Pierre Ludius, Ken Kocic, Dave Bissett, and Lascelles Brown. 
That, in fact, is the last Canadian medal of any colour in four-man. This was the second home track for Pierre Ludis. 4,200s back, just in front of Marcus Trico. So Linda Rush there in the red cap. He was driving a historic race, had his first two trips in a bobsled with a steering wheel, which he kind of liked. Well, fourth place for Justin Cripps, 400s out of the top three at the moment. He's, got a, he's got a lot of love for this track yeah. in two-man. Four-man just hasn't been doing it, but fourth here, but with a couple good sleds yet to come. A couple Germans are going to Pretty decent jump run. Last year in February, the four-man world championships were held in Königsee, Bavaria. After four heats, there was not even a hundredth behind between Johannes Lochner and Francesco Friedrich. So both German drivers were awarded the four-man world championship title. The first time in history. So the last time he was on this track, Johannes Lotner came from behind to win. Today he's got Christopher Weber, Joshua Bloom, and Christian Rasp behind him. There's the spikes, 325 16th of an inch spikes, and they're sharp. Well, there is the Lotner fan club, lots and lots of them. Yeah, well, he's born and raised a mile down the street. Everybody he knows. The school teachers, classmates, just about everybody in town knows Hansi Lochner. Start 83. So the wow, the that's pretty unbelievable that the Nico Walter team outstarted the Lochner team. Kuska's last race. Told him last week he can't retire until the Sledders Brown does. He started after him. Well, this is our World Cup leader with four victories, including last week. He comes from behind to beat Francisco Friedrich. That is a really great run. That's how to drive the bend away. Fantastic no one's got speed. speed like that. And a great exit from the Chrysler. Let's see down where we 13. go. Straight down the I middle of the line. I don't see he's going to catch him. 1300s. Now with that speed. 125 from Nico Valter in the FES sled. So the Valner does not have the same speed as the FES down the bottom. It's a really clean run, but it's not Seven. clean enough. Well, they got beat by 300s at the start. That's 900s. Wow. But Walter out drove them. Walter just went three sleds in front of him, so it's not a track issue. Nico Valter was fastest through all the speed traps. He drives an FES built sled from Berlin. And Hansi drives one of Hannes Wallner's sleds. Well, let's check out the runner tips. A little oh, bit early just there. Just got pushed away. See how round the edges yeah. of the walls are yeah. after the yeah, luge here a couple of weeks ago. Yikes. OK, There's so the battle is on. Right. Yeah. Francesco Friedrich then. Four-man and two-man world champion here last year with Candy Bauer, Martin Grotkop and Torsten Margis. Well, this has got to be in the 70s, this group. This is the same four that set the start record wow. and the track record, 487. Wow. Slowest of Nico the German Walter teams. Walter never outstarts the other teams. So, unless they're just sitting on it. Oh, yeah. Last race before the Olympic Ooh, Games. Oh, he was late there. I think one of the bunks hit. The sound looks like one of the bunks hit between the third and fourth S. Let's take a look at the speed. 116 not, for Lochner. He's not back. This is no slower than Valter as well. So the gap's going to grow. Yeah. He's not even going to be second at the line. He's going to be was, third. This was a rough ride from the time they got in. Slower again. Tap there. 116. 8. No what? speed at all. This just was a run to forget. Third, only a hundredth ahead of Mel Bardis. But I'm saying suspect start time. Yeah. This is the best starting, one of the best starting teams on the planet. And this is the team, the four men that won the four-man world championship. But they didn't set the start record. That was Hansi Lochner's team in the final run. But both teams trail, trail Walter. I'm yep. very surprised. Start. This is where I think he got a problem right there. Yep. I think the bunk hit. He came off late. And look how early he is there. Yep. Because he probably had to steer too hard. And that... Watch this exit of Echovond. Way up high. Yeah, up in we the frost. We didn't pick that up because we're looking at speeds. Then a tap. Good job by the crew seeing that. Yes, that was too high of a line in Echovond. That was up in the frost. Not perfect from Francesco Friedrich. 14th of 25 starters, Alexander Kazinov with Alexei Zaitsev, Vasily Kondratenko, 
and Alexei Pushkarev. Russian flags are in the front of our booth here, Mark. We can't see much. Well, what we didn't see was him in the two-man second heat yesterday. He got bumped out by Ivo De Bruyne. Just brutal. Both Russian sleds were tied. Only Stulnev made it through. Kazinov and Anginov both watched the second heat from the sidelines. 90s? 91. That's a good start for them. He could challenge from this position. Kazinov, one win this season for the second year in a row, it was in Whistler. Okay, well, this is one of the better drivers in the field. Let's see what he can do with the exit of the fourth S. <laughs> Two, three, that's it, 115.3, 114.8, wow. no speed. No speed for the Russian sled. That is very low speed. And they've got a slightly older version of the Valner sled. Yeah, but this sled motors are driving. And Whistler and St. Moritz. Whistler especially. One, he's two kilometers an hour down on Nico Valter. 116.5, eighth of the line behind, out of 14. Behind Marcus Trichel. Well, he was a long way behind Marcus Trichel yesterday. He's only 500s behind him in the four-man. Yeah, but Marcus Trichel's never sniffed a medal. This guy's won four or five medals in the last couple of years. Golds. Well, we can see some blue in the back, so I don't like that aerodynamic profile of the brakeman. Look at him pop up there a couple times. See, the guy in the back should be the lowest man. And his head's, I don't like their position. Might have to do, might have something to do why their speed was so low. Well, that and the fact that they're starting 491. Cody Baskey of the USA, 15th, fast, uh, 15th starter in the field of 25 in this final four-man race before the Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang, Korea. Fifth in World Cup points, one medal, a second place on Park City, basically home ice for him. And he's finished, his worst finish, 11th in Winterberg and Eagles. He's looking to rebound from yesterday. Definitely had a more consistent four-man season than two-man. Yesterday, he got his feet caught up with the steering and no steering all the way down, which is where he finished last. 44. It's a good start. Let's see the velocity. 57 flat. Should have been better. Same as Justin Cripps, who started 482. Justin Cripps currently lying in sixth place. Oh, and that's a great exit. Look at that. One. Two, now three don't... minor hits, 115 speed he's gonna need though, close. And don't forget what a horrendous bend away he had, both trips in the two-man, skidding sideways all the yeah, way. No steering in the two-man. Yeah. Well, this Whoa, is a that much was a better big change of direction there. Top six perhaps on the cards, 123.8, that's faster than we just saw from Kazinov by some margin. 115.9, right up with the German speeds in this US-built sled. 56 out, I mean, that's pretty good, he's only... 200 in front of Kachinov. by 300. Yeah. Down to Cripps. That might be a reach 11. Very distinctive look to these new US built sleds. These made in America sleds. They've yeah. got components from all over the country. And watch this. Watch the change of direction here of the sled. Bang! And watch him go to right up high. That's the, He got really yeah. on the uh, take on really early. Yeah. Here. That's a no-no. You don't want to get that close to that wall on the exit, but compared to the two-man yesterday, that's great. Cody Baskew in eighth place. Nico Valter, Johannes Lochner, Francesco Friedrich, one, two, three, with 15 sleds down. Austria's Benny Meyer, 16th of 25 starters in the final four-man race of the World Cup season in Berchtesgaden. Garden. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the action with you. Austin after a good day in two-man, looking to double up and find another top ten in the four-man race. Okay, great start. 57-1, great velocity. And Meyer, who the Austrians are starting to show some athleticism with start times. Meyer's done good in this track before. Look at that exit, look at his eyes. Look how he is above that calendar. Aerodynamic profile is excellent. 115.3 is excellent. Now this is the four-man sled, one of the two that won the World Championship last year, and it's in good hands. Meyer can drive this thing. Top four. 
keep it here at the bottom. He's coming late in the heat. He's got the worst, some of the worst ice to work with. Very good speed. Second only to Nico Valter and Johannes Rockner. And across the line, Third. that is an epic run. The Austrian run. coaches are going to like that as Manfred on the left. Franz Joseph Hoffman on the right. Manfred's his father. And uh, yeah, this young, he's only 23. Fourth, this guy. Fourth last week in San Moritz. Lying third now with the majority of the world's top four-man drivers already gone. Yeah, we're hearing now there might be some problems with Friedrich's flat. They're keeping weighing. Oh, they got Cody Basque and they're weighing it now. But Friedrich definitely had some problems to finish where he did. But watch the back end here. See, he doesn't climb on. Look, he goes straight into the curve. Remember where mm -hmm. Cody Basco got up on the high right yeah. of the take on Cody immediately? Got knocked away, didn't yeah. he? Well, Benny Meyer, what a rip he's on at the moment. Gets married in March to Elizabeth Arche, the Canadian skeleton slider. Next up, Brad Hall for Great Britain with Nick Gleason. Axel Brown making his World Cup debut. Welcome to the family, Axel. And Judah Simpson on the back of the sled. Brad Hall, bronze medalist in the second four-man race of the season, the second of the doubleheader weekend in Park City. Teammate Lamin Dean then went on to silver in Whistler the next week. Well, so they started the season full of vim and vigor. Alex Brown is, again, his World Cup debut. Yeah, first time in. And Judah, last time he was, uh, we saw him in Sam Ritz, he'd just been bounced on his head out of Horseshoe when Lamin Dean's steering came apart. Sure, the DJ has some relevance playing Yellow Submarine by the Beatles before they start. It's not a submarine and it's black, but you know, 499 getaway for the Brits. Boy, both British sleds, suspect start times. Very surprised. They should be better than that. Lamont Dean, Lamont Dean's got the 14th best time. This is the 15th best time. Yeah. And boy, oh, look at the heads rolling around in the back there. Not surprised the way he came off S4. Yeah. Banging down the bend away, Bradley Hall. 13-5, well, you would think he's gonna have that speed. Lamin was 1-13-2. When you have a start time deficiency and then a issues on the S's. So he's just behind his teammate on the splits at the moment, 122.3. That's a fraction quicker than Lamin Dean, needs to keep it tighter at the bottom to try and close. 15th place, right behind Lamin Dean, or 1200s behind Lamin Dean. So the two British sleds, 14th and 15th, only two sleds behind them. They are not yet out of the woods. One, two, three, four. I've got to look at the last few sleds to see who might the, the, fall behind there's them. There's five or six sleds that could challenge here, I mean, to get into that field. Look at that articulation split, and you saw the head slap, which tells me that a lot of They're violence. not comfortable in that sled, and plus there's too much of the number three, the, that number three guy. Look at the head wobbling yep. back and forth. Well, first time racing in a bobsled. He's uh, in a World Cup. He's going to have to learn a little bit more about riding it. Rico Peda of Switzerland crashed in Altenburg and uh, broke his right thumb. You'll see he's wearing a cast on his hand. And he also gashed his leg pretty badly, had half a dozen stitches uh, in the trackside medical center. Probably the thumb pinned and plated. Probably won't even be able to grip the bar. Let's watch his hand. See, palm all ah, He's got more. Of, he's got more knuckles on there. But he's got more fingers on grip. it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he's got his palm. He's yeah. not really squeezing down on that cast. You can see the cast. Still has to leave himself into the sled. So. 6-7. That's a full 1.2 kilometers now, quicker than the British sled that's just gone before them. 700's better at the start. This is the reckless driver who didn't have a very good run yesterday, and oh, this is the same thing helping. he did in the two man. Yeah. And the only difference is this is about 480 pounds more of a sled. 114.7. Well, it's. It's not going to win any prizes for top speed, that's for certain. Down through the bottom of the labyrinth, bouncing around, top 12 run perhaps, 123.4 speed coming back to this Swiss built city of sled. 116.5 at the bottom. 12. Yeah. Well, you know, when you have the 13th best start, you have the 12th best downtime. 700 is quicker than Brad Hall at the start, and 5300 is quicker at the bottom. So 13th fastest start, 12th at the bottom.
400s behind Chris Spring, 500s behind Kazinov, 700s behind Baskew, a tenth behind Tricol. Watch the uh, team, see if they're comfortable in the slide. Yeah, they, they had stayed pretty much behind each other with those violent left to rights that you get here in the the doodles. Uh, Rico needs some time to recover his hand, doesn't he? And uh, that leg injury. Next up, Loic Kosteg of France with Vincent Ricard and Roman Heinrich back in the sled. He's pushing instead of Vincent Castel. Yeah, Yannis, yeah. Yannis Pujar, the fourth man on the sled. Heinrich pushed in training as well. So you got a. This is the four man French sled going to the Olympics. And the two man driver is at three. Okay, so the French, they get into the mid, uh, mid 90s. They could get a top 12. Oh, six, terrible. 18th best start. Now, he is going to need to be perfect to get himself ahead of the British sleds with that start deficiency. Mistake 13th in World Cup points, two ahead of Rico Peter. Well, this World Cup ranking has a lot to do with your. Well, you're going to start at the Olympic Games, so everybody's adjusting it. Behind Rico Peter. In fact, he's between the Romanians and Brad Hall. So he's going to try and overhaul Brad Hall. Oh, he came out of there early. 123, not great speed, but quicker Skidding than the Brits. There too. 158, also, he's going to overhaul both British sleds. Does he get ahead of Lamindine? Not quite. By 400s, he's in 16th. Lamindine in 15th is nearly safe. Brad Hall wow. is in the drop zone. I what curve that was down on the bottom. It was right before the finish, the C curve. C curves the left hander as you come off. Right before Echo Vaughn, right before the finish curve there, the big the big curve in the bottom. Watch this. This is, you know, this wasn't nice, but uh, look at his eyes. Now watch this. Look how high. Watch near the left side of the wall. See? Came off too early there. Let's see how it affects him here in Echovon. We're still going to make a mistake on the exit of Echovon, but this mistake wasn't made here. It was made up in the previous curve. Yeah. So the French are down in 15th place. Next up is our 20th starter, Nick Polignato of Canada, with Lascelles Brown, Jerry Nemet, and Ben Coquel. Lascelles Brown, a winner here back in the 2006 7 season with Pierre Luders. 15th best start, 55 9. The velocity is way down. So now Nick Polignato, the Bishop's University football guy, uh, going to need to be perfect here. And. Not perfect. 114 speed, he'll take it. 113.8. Nope, didn't have it. So now he's he's uh, bubble bound. Yeah, he's battling for 15th place ahead of Lamin Dean. Whoa! 122.3, that's the same as Brad Hall, a little slower than Lamin Dean, so he might slip behind. 15th. The line, he is in 15th, and he is ahead of Lamindine. So 20 sleds down, and the five potentially in danger: Lamindine, Loic Coste, Brad Hall, Doran Grigori, and Maria Constantin. Nick Polignato will make the second heat. You got two more Russians coming. A good couple good Czech sleds. Look at this now. So how does he get on that right wall? Where does he get on? Keep your eyes on that. See the lower, you look at the rudder marks there. So he was medium. Hey everyone, last race. And it's a wild ride. There is the Koenigsegg that gives the track of Berchter's Garden its name. Nico Walter leads after the first 20 sleds. Five to go in the first heat. The last race of the bobsleigh World Cup for four man. Maxim Anginov missed the cut in the two-man race yesterday, as did teammate Alexander Kasyanov. They were tied 21st at the end of the first run. And he needs a much better run here, and he is a much better four-man driver. So there were five Russian drivers, teams, in the competition yesterday, men and women. The women's a two-man, and 
There's only one Russian team that had a good start time of the five. And that Russian team finished fifth yep. in the women's competition. Just a second. That's good. There, there's the top ten start. I don't understand how they could be so decent at the start in the four-man and so ineffective in the four-man. I mean, the two-man. It was deplorable yesterday. There's two extra time. sets of legs, I think, is the answer. I'm not sure Anginov is the fastest pusher. Plus, you can see all over number two. Yep. Number two's right there. You can see him more than as much as the driver's helmet. Watch as they come out. Keep your eyes on the number two guys where he snaps left to right here. Decent speed. See now you can see those guys yeah. rumbling around back there. That's air. That's a lot of air. Russians tend to have a habit of making the guy at two ride cannonball, which is not yeah. only very uncomfortable, but not great for body position. 1158, decent speed. He's in the race. 72. Ahead of Ivo de Bruyne. And that means that Maria Constantin is out. She will not get a second run. So 49 23 is I mean, in. The 10th the best start is what did it for him. But just don't like the way the number two guys ride in the back of that sled. Yeah, he and the guy at three. There's a lot of rolling. A lot. You know, there's a lot of going well, back and forth. You can see his legs. He's not riding cannibal. His legs are around the driver, but nevertheless. Watch the head slap here. Yeah. Look at the way the heads are moving. Look at, they're not. You know, they're, there's just too much looseness in there. Kieran Lantuk's a tall old fella. He needs to be out in the slipstream a bit more. And that was Ilva Hutzin rider. Kieran Lantuk in this sled. This is Alexei Stulnev with Antuk, Ilimalik, and Roman Koshelev. Taking over from Maxim Belugin. And Stulnev is... Well, he made the two-man field yesterday, whereas his team, two teammates didn't. Best finish of the year, a 12th in San Moritz last week, and a 6th in Eagles. I wonder what the Russian for lackluster is, because that's what their season has been so far. Let's see if they have a better aerodynamic profile. Yes, they do. You can tell it right off the bat. In the start time, like their teammates, 490, and start velocity. 56-8, right there. to 13. Yeah. Well, let's see what he can do with the exit. He's a good driver. Good aerodynamic profile. You don't see any helmets bouncing around like the other guys did. The Russian three slide needs a lesson in aerodynamics. How's that? Those guys are pretty four is good right? speed. This could be a top 10 run. It's up to eighth place on the splits between Chris Spring and Cody Baskew. 123, that's the best speed we've seen in half a dozen sleds. Still there. Sixth, seventh, eighth of the line. Well, some redemption for him. At least in the first heat. Alex is still there ahead of Marcus Trichel behind Justin Cripps. And that means that Brad Hall is now on the bubble and neither Romanian sled will make the second heat. Doran Grigori joins teammate Maria Constantin on the sidelines. Okay, this is the Disneyland ride, these four S's. If you get it right, and you exit here, you saw the articulation being pretty maxed out there. The exit, he's really low in the sled. He's got some great team behind him for the aerodynamic profile, which is why he had good speeds all the way down. USA's Justin Olsen now trying to find his way into the field. Nate Weber, Carlo Valdez, and Chris Folk on the back of the sled. And this is the brand new, brand new four man, isn't it? Just no, no, arrived. No, 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 no. Oh, that's the one Cody's Cody and the other one? Cody's, Cody's in the brand Cody's. new, brand new. This one's the, the prototype that he's been Mark using all one. year. Yeah. Well, they should get the 80s. If they don't, it's disappointing. 82. Excellent. Let's see the velocity. 57.3. Excellent. Fastest start of the competition still with Nico Valter, 4-8-0. I would have bet against that. Let's see what Olsen could do here. Good exit, that's what he needed. Oh. Takes the hit. Oh. Too many hits. Three. 14 and change. Big. Yeah, 14 6 This should still be a top five or six run. He's in second place at the moment. Now out to seventh on the splits after the bend away. He's coming late in the competition too, so he's got a scratched up track. 123-0. He's got one of the, he's probably the, one of the least experienced four-man drivers in the field. Well, lost Ten. a bit of speed to the Russians, so he drops down to 10th position. 
49.05, 300. Part of his teammate Basque, though. Both American sleds got great start times. Yeah. Look at the group. We've got a group from eighth place, Stulnev. A tenth of a second takes you down to 14th place, Rico Peter. For what Justin Olsen's been doing, that's pretty good. Right there. Right. Can you guys say hi? Hi, Dax. Hi, Brinley. I'll be home soon. <laughs> Chris awesome. Boat. Well, these guys been on the road for 90 days. Look how more. wide that American sled is, though. Yeah. This is that new technique. I mean, pretty good aerodynamic profile from the guys. They aren't bouncing around too much. A little bit back there. Yeah, number three guy is. There's a little bit left to right. With the head, bit of room loose. in the sled for yeah. the athletes, unlike some of the other designs there are. Two to go. Who's going to make the field? Brad Hall has been bounced out. Lamindine 19th. Loic Costage 20th. Neither of them are safe because both Czech Republic sleds could make it in. Both, by the way, are going to the Olympic Games as well as two so full, much uh, two positive two -man sleds. energy amongst the Czech guys. Yeah. They're so thrilled. As anybody. As much as they're thrilled, there's some people walking around this venue that are not going to the Olympic Games. And, well, we feel for them. Yep, it's that toughest time of the winter, 5-0-3. It tells us some shoulders back there. Break, but we can see too much of him. 20-second fastest start, but Jan Verber can drive a four-man. Well, that's yeah. more of his specialty. Whoa, uh, gets the double tapper, and that might that consign him. That's jinx. 113 speed, he's in trouble. He might be on the sidelines. Two, though. That's pretty good, considering the start deficiency in the... A lot of hits down there in the sh straightaway, bend away. Tell me about this sled. It's an old Dresden chassis. They made a lot of modifications last year. They went back and took most of them off. Right, right on the sled's bubble. better. Looks like he's going to get in. 115.8 is good speed at the bottom. He is in. He knocks out the Kostrag is out. By now, 200. only one sled can make the field unless Dominic Dvorak ties him to the 100th. How rough is that between teammates? It's yeah. either Jan Verber or Dominic Dvorak unless they are exactly tied for 20th. Well, this didn't help his efforts. Plus, you could see all sorts of uniforms back there. Shouldn't see anything. And in the finish, look at the heads left to right. We're talking hundreds of CC uh, Olsen weighing on the right. So final sled of the first heat is Dominic Dvorak. And the young driver from Czech Republic qualified himself in two-man and four-man, along with teammate Jan Verber. Now, can both of them make the heat? It will be a remarkable piece of timing if they get to the line tied to the 100th. But that is the Czech Republic's only chance of having two four-man sleds in the race. He did finish 17th in Oldenburg two weeks ago, his best four-man finish of the year. Only three races, this is his fourth. 94, 17th best start. Well, he could finish 17th. He started 494, his teammate at Tensler, 503. And that's Much a better, better exit as well. So if he gets into the 114, 7 or 8 here. That's a good run down the bend away oh, as well. No speed though. So he's got, he doesn't have the sled or the touch that his teammate. Young oh, late. late there. Whoa, he's the one of the slappiest runs. Down to 18th. 121.8. Still 18th on the splits. 19th on the splits, it's him or Verba, who's going to be in 20th at the line? Is it a tie? No, he's in. And Jan Verba, they are tied! They are tied! You've got to be kidding me. There you go. Come on! You called it! Come on! You can't do that! Last year, the World Championships, we had a tie for the gold medal for the first time ever in the history of the sport for men. Now, do they know that they're in or not? He doesn't know how yet. 20th, but tied for 20th. Wow. No speed. Look at these lines here. Really low in the Chrysler or in the Chrysler. How's he get out of Look this at thing? The skid. skid here. And this four man in this really narrow chute. Oh, Boy. Man, I thought there was some disaster yeah. rolling Do you know what? on that exit. There was four people in that sled thought they were going over. Yeah, Dominic Svorjak shakes his head. He's just watched that replay. Uh, there was more luck than judgment in that.
but we have 21 sleds going into our final run of the four-man season. And it is Nico Walter from Altenburg who leads here in Koenigsegg. Well, he is from Saxony. We're in Bavaria. Might as well be two different countries here in the German way of things. The Bavarians would say it is. It is the way of... <laughs> You know, but the thing is, this guy had more, the best start. He yep. never has the best start for me. Uh, he was there. And look at that. Nico Volta, Johannes Lochner, and Benny Meyer tied with Francesco Friedrich. And see how close it is. A tie, a hundredth back, five hundreds back, four hundreds back. And then we get into the ten on down group. And that's just going to be plain insane. And the very first thing we have to do in the, in the second heat will be break the tie between the drivers from the Czech Republic, Jan Verber and Dominic Dvorak, both in as they tie to the 100th for 20th. So four sleds don't make it. Loic Kosteg, Brad Hall, and the Romanians, Doran Gregori and Maria Constantin. Oh. Join John Morgan, the IBSF TV crew, and me, Martin Haven, for the final run of the World Cup season, coming up at 10-2. Um, in about another half an hour. We'll see you then. Bye for now.